Yo guys, Haku here, and it is Nazi Lolly time once again. We have Yojo Senki episode 4 review. This was episode 4, right? Yes. Yes, it was. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's episode 4. I keep forgetting because everything else was on episode 3 this week. I think this is the first anime I'm covering to hit episode 4. So uh, I think that's what's throwing me off. So uh, yeah, episode 4 review for this. And uh, I actually really like this uh, episode. I don't know if I want to say it's quite my favorite episode so far because I liked episode 2 quite a bit. Even the last episode I thought was pretty good. Um, so yeah, I did like this one a lot too though. I like the style that this one had. Um, even the animation I like. The animation I first started really noticing this episode, um, like truly, truly keying into it, the depth of field and stuff, the just... The way they use depth in the animation to me is really interesting. So uh, that's one thing I can say I like about the animation here. But um, starting from the very beginning, talking about things in the episode. Oh my gosh, Tanya waking up noise is so freaking cute. Completely adorable. Uh, also, it's apparently been six months since she has come to the capital to go to university. So time jumps all over the place thus far. Tanya will be 30 by episode seven at this rate. Um, and it's funny, she's still just trying to live the easy life, trying to make it through classes, just live the easy life. Um, I also thought the scene was interesting where she says she feels uneasy without a gun at all times, and she actually thinks this because she has to be ready for when Troll God shows up next time so she can try to shoot him, which I have no idea why she would think this would work, but whatever. Good, good on ya, Tanya. Um, and also, then in the library, we have her cute, adorable, can't-reach book sounds. Uh, then we have the general strategist guy, whose name I forget, and he shows up. And when they discuss all the different stuff in the possibility of a world war later on, um, I thought it was very funny, because I thought they were already fighting wars on all sides. I thought they were already using this strategy that Tanya proposes. Um, because we were told about it in like episode one or something, but apparently they weren't using that already, or they were, and this is somehow different despite sounding exactly the same. And if we're only fighting against the one alliance, why are we fighting a war on all sides? Is our nation inside of that other nation? Like, there's some things that aren't totally making sense right here. But past that, pretty much what I thought was funny about it is they were saying, hey, you know, if uh, Magic Germany here takes over Magic France, Magic Russia and Magic Britain are going to get pissed. And I was like, oh man, could the World War parallels be any, uh, could be any stronger right now. So um, I did think that uh, that was quite funny. Uh, and sort of kind of those things, if Tanya knew the human world history, she could kind of almost predict the future in a way, if that's the way it's going down here as well. But either way, I love that uh, when she says the first thing and he retorts, oh, so you don't think we'll win, where she just freaks out internally and is like, I would shoot myself in the stupid mouth. I, I thought that scene was very funny. And I really did enjoy seeing a lot of this more serious uh, strategy and politics side of things, because it's something I'm not seeing a lot of this season, and it's an interesting take on things. Uh, then Eric we see reading the World War prediction thing that Tanya wrote up and the uh, calls for this new squadron or whatever and uh, this th this dude Eric he's a dramatic fucker I will give him that um, so then Uger oh I love this scene when um, the Uger guy I, I think that was his name shows up at the cafe or whatever and sits and talks to Tanya tells her the, to leave the military and stuff that was a really good scene I love that conversation um, I thought it was funny, too, that she legitimately referenced Hitler. Um, at least I, she talked about a fascist who used the same methods as her. And I'm thinking, um, that's a damned, uh, that, that's a pretty damned well, um, not veiled at all Hitler reference. So, um, I, she is definitely 1000% like people are saying, um, like the joke of, oh, she's a lolly Hitler. I'm like, um... The joke may be coming to reality here. Uh, so, um, yeah, and then we get into the strategy talking and stuff. And like I said, I already kind of thought this was the strategy they were using and stuff. And again, Eric during this meeting and stuff. Eric, 
they were he wasn't in the meeting. I think it was afterward he was talking to the, to the guy or whatever. Eric is a dramatic fucker. Like this dude takes things very very seriously. I mean, it's a serious situation, but this dude freaks out about stuff. Um, and then, of course, Tanya's put in charge of the battalion, of course, and she's charged to find 48 people to make it up, and I, <laughs> then seeing her notice when she got all the replies in, and she, they were, uh, showing the notice where it's like, horrible pay, will probably get killed, and stuff like that, I thought that was hilarious, um, another re- sorry, hiccup. Another really funny scene within this uh, serious stuff. And then, of course, at the very end, Victoria shows back up because she cannot keep her nose out of trouble. Why, why go back to the front lines, Victoria? You're not cut out for it. Um, and then we get the ending, and I really love the ending theme still. I like the opening. Like I said last week, I feel like they could have done better with the opening uh, animation, but I love the ending. I love the artwork they use, and I believe people have said that's artwork from the light novel. Um... I really like the way they do it, and I really like the song as well. So, um, the ending, to me, surpasses the opening. Uh, so yeah, I thought this episode had some good, serious plot that I enjoyed, and, um, we had cute, cute little Tanya, who is possibly totally Hitler, um, and, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this type of story we don't get it that often and at least i haven't got it this season where we took this sort of look at a show in its universe and stuff so i liked what went on here i mean it wasn't the best thing ever it could have been done better but i liked it um so yeah because of that i'll give the episode eight hitler references out of ten eight hitler references out of ten and that's it so like if you did like the video Comment down there and tell me what you thought of this episode and what you thought of my thoughts on it. Subscribe for more Yojo Senki, Little Witch Academia, Demi Chan with Katari Tai, One Piece, um, The Walking Dead, Boku no Hero Academia, so many things on the Channel Tower of God, um, Kobayashi San Chino, Maid Dragon, which may be anime of the season for me right now. Maid Dragon is amazing. I love it. Um, also, follow on Twitter if you want. I'll try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. And that is it. So thank you so much for watching once again. And I'll see you all next time.